Hey there, science friends, and welcome to another edition of Photoshop for the Scientist. So today, in basic lesson number five, we're going to be looking at how to add in some boxes and arrowheads and maybe some other shapes into your figure, uh, which can be really handy if you're wanting to maybe single out an area or draw attention to a particular cell in your image or whatever else you have that you may want to point out in your figure. Um, and we're going to be picking up from basically this figure we've been working on for the past few videos now. So let's get right on into it then. So to do this, the tool that you're going to want to be using is the shape tool, which oddly enough, you can get to by pushing the U key, um, which I don't really know why that's the shortcut key, but there it is. And if you click and hold, there's some other options here for other shapes, uh, which we'll come to a little later on. But for now, we're going to start with the rectangle tool. And so if you look up here to your tool options uh, panel, this first button here is just like the text preset button like we covered in the previous video. So I'm going to leave that for now. Um, but this next uh, tool mode that I want to talk about. So we have three options here, shape, path, and pixels. And when I first started learning Photoshop, I tended to stick with pixels, um, obviously mostly because I didn't really know what I was doing, and pixels just seemed like a familiar face to me. Um, but in doing so, you really limit what you can do later on, and it's really hard to edit or make any changes later on. So we want to try to avoid that, at least for these purposes. Path um, is not really what we're looking for now. Uh, I'm going to cover paths in a later video, but just for now, uh, let's say just stick with shape, because that's really what we're looking for here. <clears throat> so next up, we have a fairly self-explanatory uh, fill, whatever fill color you're looking for. So in this case, I'm going to set it to blank because we want to create a box outline. And stroke, uh, I'm going to, which is your outline basically, I'm going to choose black. And then here we have uh, your stroke width. So I really just hate these sliders because I find it impossible to try to land on uh, something accurate. So I'm just going to type in one point. Here we have your stroke style. So I'm going to stick with the solid line, but sometimes it's nice to go dashed or dotted. Uh, you have a couple of other options here if you want your stroke to be inside your selection or centered or outside. doesn't really matter, um, so whatever you like. Caps are not going to be applicable to boxes. And corners, you can either go um, hard edge or rounded edge, or maybe I think this is a flat edge. But I'm going to stick with hard edge. Uh, here you can specify the actual width and height of your um, box that you're about to make. So you can put it in pixels, but you can also type in, let's say if you want to do 0 0.5 inches by 0 0.5 inches, um, Photoshop will be perfectly happy to accept that. Um, but I typically just go freehand, so I'm not too worried about that. These next three buttons, um, this first button here is basically saying, do you want to put a put your shape on a new layer every single time? Which is typically what I'll choose because I find that gives me the most um, flexibility later on uh, if I want to change something. Um, and as such, uh, these other two buttons are not really going to be much use because they really only apply if you're putting down multiple shapes onto the same layer or creating custom shapes or complex shapes. Which, for the purposes of this video, we do not really need to cover. This little gearbox here gives you uh, some additional options if you want to create a square or a fixed sized or proportional. Um, but like I said, I tend to do these sorts of things just freehand, so I don't usually mess around with this too much. And align edges is another one of these things that's really only going to matter if you're putting shapes, multiple shapes on the same layer. So if we were to Go ahead and actually make the box now. What you do is just click and drag, and I like to hold the shift key because that uh, constrains the width and height height together and lets you make a perfect square. So <laughs> I get this uh, properties panel to block the view for me. Um, but if I minimize that, you can see now that I've got my square here. And if I want to move it around or reposition it, I can just use my move tool. And uh, say if I'm not happy with how big this box is or if I want to make it smaller, uh, all I need to do is go up to the Edit Free Transform command here, which you can get to also by pushing Control T, and just uh, resize it the way you would anything else. And I'm holding Shift here again to constrain the width and height. And you can also move it around. And if you're happy with those changes, you can click the plus sign. And so that's all you really need uh, when making a box. Um, now there is one thing I did want to cover, and that's in earlier versions of Photoshop, 
you didn't have the fill and stroke options here. And I don't know exactly what version they added them in, um, but I'm pretty sure for CS3, which I use at work, that they don't have it. So I'm going to show you another way to make a box if you're using an early version. So I'm going to delete this for now. So let's say we're making our shape layer, and typically what we're going to have is a solid fill and no option for stroke. So you're just going to have sort of a solid black square, <laughs> which again is going to be obstructed by this annoying panel. Um, but you'll have something like that. And obviously this is not going to do very good for us on the panel here. So what you want to do is go to fill and take that down to zero. And from there, you'll go to this FX icon, which is going to fall off the screen when I click it. But you'll just have to take my word that we have some options here. And you're going to want to use Stroke. And this is going to bring up this Layer Style dialog box, which is going to look a little bit different, probably, um, if you're using an earlier version of Photoshop. Uh, they sort of retooled things in Photoshop CC 2015. But basically, you want to find the Stroke option and make sure that's checked. And then you, from here, you can uh, choose all of the different uh, um, stroke options that we had earlier on. So you can choose stroke size, uh, position, and color. And so, I don't know, we have a preview here. So uh, right now it's at six pixels. So you can take that up or down with the arrow keys. And I don't know, six looks pretty good to me. So you can say, okay. And there you go. And that's another way of having or creating a box uh, in an, if you're using an earlier version of Photoshop. If you do want to modify this box, you can then just go into your Layers panel here and double-click Stroke, and that will bring up this Layer Style box again, and you can fiddle around with it as you see fit. So the next thing I want to cover is how to add in some arrowheads. And we're going to be using the same tool, except this time you want to click and hold and go to Custom Shape Tool. And so we have the same options along the top here, um, but you're going to get to this Shape Options box here. And you want to click on that. <clears throat> and you'll have a list of shapes here. Right now I already have it set to arrows. But to see what you have available, you click on this little gear icon, and you'll have a big list of all the different symbols that are available to you, available to you in Photoshop. And so you can choose all, or if you want to add a cat to your figure, you can choose animals. But for us, we're going to choose arrows. And you might get this uh, dialog box that says replace uh, current shapes with shapes from arrows. And so if you say OK, it's just going to replace what's already here. Or if you say append, it'll just add it onto the bottom. I'm, uh, but you don't need to worry. They don't get erased or anything if you say OK. You can access them again just by going to this settings icon. So I'm just going to say OK. Now for figures, I find usually maybe this arrow or this arrow are usually pretty good. Uh, I'm going to stick with just the arrowhead for now. And for this, you do the exact same thing. You just click and drag. And you can hold Shift to constrain the width and height. But personally, I like to have sort of a more elongated arrow for pointing things out. And if you've got the size that you like, uh, you can move it around with the Move tool. And say if you want to change the angle, you're not happy with it being totally horizontal. Again, you would do the same thing as you did with the box. You would just go up to Free Transform. And here you can rotate it by sort of clicking on the outside of one of these corners and uh, rotate it to whatever angle you like and as long as this guy doesn't get in the way you can click and drag to point out whatever you're trying to point out and then you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to sort of nudge it into position and if you're happy with where it is you can click the check mark and you're good to go uh, the one last thing to point out is that if you do want to change the color or even uh, adjust the actual shape of this arrow, what you can use is the black arrow tool or the path selection tool. And so if you have the tool, this tool selected, you can click on your arrow and this brings up all of these options again. So you can choose a different fill, we'll just choose blue say, or maybe add a stroke. And that just lets you at any point come back to your shape and edit those settings uh, at any point, which is really quite handy. So. Oh, actually, yeah, and the one last thing I should just point out before we go is that uh, once you make these shapes, it is really handy um, to keep yourself organized in your Layers panel here. So I'm going to rename, by double-clicking on the name here, my rectangle to Merge Box. And my shape I'm going to rename to Green Arrow. And trust me, you will thank yourself in the end for labeling these 
uh, if you ever have to come back to your figure and work on things again once you've forgotten what all of these layers are. And with that, I think we'll call it a day. So again, if you have any questions or comments in particular about your own figure or your own work, uh, leave them below in the comments and I will do my best to respond to them. And I guess we will sign off with that. So remember, you worked hard to get your data, at least I'm assuming you did. And so hopefully I can help you work a little bit harder to make sure that that data looks fantastic. Okay, well that's it for today, friends. I will see you all next time.